Hey, welcome back. Today I have a super exciting new video for you where we will be discussing three brand new CSS features that you actually can start using today. I mean, before it would have taken years before new features got released and now all of a sudden there's these new features that seem to appear, well, almost every week. In this video, we will be learning a few things. First, how you can animate from display none to display block, which would have caused headaches before and uh, many, many dirty hacks. And also how you can use the new HTML popover API to make, for example, a hamburger navigation, but make it in such a way that it will only cost you two lines of code, as well as being fully accessible out of the box. Time to dive in. Like always, let's first have a brief look at what the starting point is. So if we look at the browser, you see that there's already this hero component with an AI generated image in the background. Plus we already have this hamburger button that if we click it in a second, it should show our navigation. Also, we can scroll down a little bit. So there is a little bit of text to do that, but that's pretty much it. Then if we jump into the code, you see that there's the following. First, there's this hamburger button that again will show our menu. Then we have this nav component, which has a button in there too, to close the navigation again, plus the anchors of our navigation. The reason you don't see this navigation right now is because it has the hidden attribute, which of course we will remove in a second. And finally, you see these two sections. The first one is the main hero and the second one is the additional text to scroll. You also notice that I'm using Tailwind here like I do in most of my videos. However, in this video, besides the class names you see here, we're actually going to use plain CSS. Because I think for explaining these newer things, there's a lot less to explain if we would do it with plain CSS. There will, however, be a follow-up video pretty soon as well, where I will also show you how to do this with Tailwind. Okay, so now let's get back and let's first remove that hidden attribute. If we then hop back in the browser, we see that our navigation appeared. These are the links that are in there, and you also see that we also have this close button overlapping the hamburger button. However, by default, we don't want this navigation to show. And that is actually where I want to introduce the very first thing. And that is called the popover attribute. This is a new attribute that again is already available in all modern browsers. So you can definitely already use this in all of your projects. And I would really advise you to as well. The way this works is that we need to go to our nav component and we need to add the popover attribute. In this case, however, because we're using React, we should also pass this an empty string as a value because the React team decided that that was the way they were going to implement it. If you use regular HTML, you can simply use the attribute and you don't need to set any value. The only thing that is not fully stable about this yet is the types for React, but I guess that will also be there pretty soon. So the thing we need to do to fix these types is we need to actually reference the React Canary types, which are kind of their alpha types for version 19 in this case, and then all of a sudden this error is fixed. So that's something we still need to do for now, but apart from that, everything just works. Now let's jump back in the browser and see what this already did. If we go back, we already see that our navigation now is hidden. And that is the default behavior of HTML popover. The element by default is not visible. Now, the way we trigger that is we go back and we should go to our button, which is the trigger to show our popover. And we can add another attribute on there called popover target. The value of that should refer to an ID of a popover element. So let's say we add nav in here. That then means that we need to go into our nav component and we need to add an ID of nav on there too. If we then save that, we see that we have the ID as well as the popover attribute and our button has the popover target. We then go back and we click our hamburger button. All of a sudden you see we have this element in the center of the page and that element is our popover element. And we didn't have to write any JavaScript for this. And the cool thing is I can also hit escape now and the thing just disappears and I can click it again and I can just click like anywhere outside of it and it also closes. So this thing is fully accessible and we didn't have to write any JavaScript for it. And that makes me super excited because before this will be a lot of work to create manually with JavaScript. And this already is the very first win of this video because this API is so simple that in my opinion, if you wanna make any of these popover kind of elements, you should use this attribute. So let's take a quick look at what this actually does. If we open up the inspector with our navigation open, you see that we have our element here and that it's also a nav element that's still regular in the DOM. However, what you also see is that it's actually over top of our main hero, even though our main hero is after our nav element. So if we don't set any Z index, you would expect the section to be actually the one that's over top. 
However, one new thing that you should notice here is that it's actually rendering in the DevTools something called top layer. And if you see that, you will also see top layer at the bottom of our DOM. And that is actually where it shows us that this nav element is actually inside the top layer. And this top layer is also a new thing. And what it actually says is that this element is currently in the topmost layer. So you don't need to add any more Z index 99999 to make this the topmost div of your page, but you just use top layer. And actually the popover element is already doing that for us. We don't need to do anything about it. Because as you can see, there is no Z index specified here. And again, it's still the topmost layer. If we do go to the computer tab though, we see that there's still quite some styles applied. One of the things, for example, is position fixed. So this element by default gets position fixed. Also it has inset zero. So you, for example, see left zero as well as top zero. So the element is centered in the middle. Meaning that if we would add a width and a height on this, all of a sudden this element would span the entire width and height of the page. So let's do that. If we would go in here and we say width full and height full, we should add a space in there. Then you see the element simply fills up the entire page. Also, one other thing you should notice is that because we're using popover, we also get this backdrop component for free. This backdrop element can be used to have, for example, this transparent layer that you see behind, for example, a modal. So if we would go to this backdrop and we would add some styles on here, we could, for example, say background red, and you see that we have this background element that's already there, which we can use to create this transparent back layer. But we will style that background better in a minute because what I first want to show you is the following. If we close this and then it doesn't work, which is my mistake. First, let's make it close. So for that, we need to also go to this close button and we just need to copy that popover target and paste it on there. And then all of a sudden this button as well as the open button both toggle our popover. So if we go back, we can now click it and you see that we already have this opening and closing state. Now, first, let's remove that ugly red background because what I wanted to show you is if you inspect that nav element and you go to the display property, you see that there currently is display none. And if we open it, it becomes display block. The problem with that is though, that you can't animate a change from display none to display block. And this was one of the most annoying things that I have had to work with in front end for, well, since ever. And now there's a fix for this as well. And that fix is called transition behavior allow discrete. Sounds a bit vague, so let me just show you what it means. And what better way to show you what it means than already starting to add some nice fade-in animations to our nav component. So we're gonna jump into CSS world, so I'm gonna add a class to our main nav, and let's just call it main nav. Then we go into the CSS, and we're gonna add some styles on here. Let's start by adding a main nav, and then we're gonna say transition 500 milliseconds opacity and then opacity zero. Next, we're also gonna add main nav and then popover open, which is a custom pseudo selector that popover will automatically add for us. And based on that, we can then say opacity one. And with this, well, until recently, it wasn't possible to add a fade in animation. Because again, if we would go back and we would toggle this, Nothing would happen because our element is at the same time transitioned from display none to display block. And this allow discrete allows us to do the following. We can now add display as a transition property as well. So let's add another property, which is 500 milliseconds for display. And then we're going to say allow discrete. And if we would now go back, all of a sudden you see that we almost have a fade in animation, at least for the exit state. And the way this works is that this allow discrete now allows properties that can't be animated to still be transitioned. What it now simply does is it waits until this timeout has passed and then it switches from display none to display block and vice versa. And thanks to that, we all of a sudden can make fade in animations happen with elements going from display block to display none and vice versa. Now the question is though, why is this fade in not working? And that is because we need to add one more thing. And that one more thing is also brand new and it's called at starting style. So what starting style does is it allows us to specify a style that should be applied right when an element is added to the page. And an element added to the page also means when an element is changed from display none to display block. 
As soon as that happens, the browser quickly applies that style and then any other style kicks in, for example, our opacity one one for the popover open element. So if we would copy this style and we would paste it and would set opacity to zero, what then happens is as soon as the element switches from display none to display block, the browser will apply this style first and then this will get applied, causing it to fade in because we have specified a transition on the opacity. So if we go back, the fade in still works, but now we also have a fade in. And all of a sudden, we now have a display block and display none animation. Well, at least kind of, because the element isn't on the page anymore and we can still interact with the page. And this allow discrete in combination with starting style is, well, super, super nice to have. Because all of a sudden, we don't need to, for example, add a pointer events none when this thing is hidden or move it off the screen so you can still click through it. Now we can just make the element display none like it should have been all along. Now let's add a little bit of more styles and animations to make this just look a little bit better. So first thing I want to do is if we open this, I want these nav items to be centered in the page. So for that, we can say if the popover is open, we actually want it to be display crit instead of display block, because then all of a sudden the items get centered. And that is partially because I also already had place item center on there, which just sent us the items. And by instead of using display block, using display grid, we can now center the elements. Next, let's also make sure that the text is a little bit more readable by using that backdrop component. So let's go in here and then we're gonna say main nav and then backdrop. And then in there, we can say background color, RGBA zero. And let's also add a backdrop filter of a blur with 10 pixels. And then all of a sudden, this already looks quite a bit better. And still everything works and it fades, but not fully anymore. And the reason for that being is that we didn't add a transition to our backdrop yet. So let's go back and then we're going to say main nav backdrop. So this way we set the transition on both the backdrop as well as the popover element. And then we also set up a transition for both the opacity and display, as well as we set the initial value to opacity zero. Of course, if the popover is open, we should also make it fade in. So we see the fade in happen. So let's say main nav popover open and then backdrop opacity one. Plus we need to go now to our starting style to also define the starting style so the fade in can happen. So we're gonna add main nav, pop over open and backdrop. Thank you, Copilot. And then we set that to opacity zero as well. And if we then click, we now see that both the backdrop as well as the text fades in. However, one thing you also will notice is if we close it, the text fades out, but the backdrop disappears automatically. And that is because there's actually one more thing that we should add to our transition here. And that transition property is called overlay. So let's just copy that. And then we're gonna add overlay. And overlay is actually what happens if an element is moved from the regular page to a top layer. And that change is also something that happens instantly. However, by also adding allow discrete to that property, we all of a sudden can make this wait until our opacity fate has completed. And with that, if we would go back, you see that all of a sudden we have a really nice fade in animation happening. And again, I can still hit escape for example, and everything is fully accessible like it should. I can tap in there, I can hit space, I can hit escape, everything works and I didn't have to write any JavaScript. But we're still not done yet. I actually want to take it just a little bit further by also animating the child elements. And with these child elements, I of course mean these links. What I want to add here is I want to add a staggered fade in animation where all these items move up one by one. Because it is not only the parent that is toggled from display none to display block, because the parent is changed, all the elements are also added and removed from the page. So a starting style animation will work there just as well. So how can we add this anchor animation? Well, we just go in and we're gonna add main nav and then we target our anchors in that. And then we're gonna say transition 500 milliseconds transform. And note that I'm not adding a overlay or display animation on it because this anchor is a child of our main nav, 
which already has this allow discrete on there, meaning that this element will only get removed once the opacity fade has happened. So meaning that we also have more than enough time to complete this animation because it has the same duration. So if we would scroll down, we can, for example, add another style here where we say main nav, pop over open, and then the anchor. And then we're gonna say transform, translate y of zero, because once it's open, it should be in its regular position. However, as a starting point, we can say main nav, pop over open, anchor, and we can say transform, translate y, for example, 48 pixels. So now the starting point is 48 pixels down, and then it automatically animates to translate y of zero. So that means that if we would go back now, and then we would open it, and you see that the elements fade in from the bottom. Now, if we wanna move it outwards, because if we would click now, it will just fade out, but we can actually move it upwards when it closes. And for that, we need to go back to the default styles, which is then the styles that will be applied once this style is removed, so once the element closes. So we can then say transform, translate y of minus 48 pixels. And all of a sudden, if we would go back and open it, it comes from the bottom and closes, it goes up. And all of a sudden we have this looping animation. And even if we would click really fast, you see that it comes back from the top because we are kind of canceling that animation before it completes. So we're interrupting the animation. And with that, we all of a sudden have created a super interesting animation that not long ago would have been really hard to achieve without adding one, some JavaScript and B, some dirty hacks to fix that display non-display block behavior. CSS is changing so rapidly lately and honestly, it really excites me because it brings so many nice goodies like these. So I hope with watching this video, you learned something new and you also realize that you can make your life a lot easier from now on. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more of these interesting tips. Leave a like as well because it helps me a lot. And then I hope to see you in the next video.